do you want to learn how to design a modern isometric house in Adobe Illustrator? If you do, follow along today and learn some skills and techniques that's going to enable you to design a dope isometric design. As designers, it's important to have a website to show off our portfolio of work. Bookmark offers the most straightforward and quickest way to generate an awesome website without even having to write down a single line of code and all completed in a matter of minutes. Check out the link in the description below to learn more about Bookmark and design your website today. So first and foremost, I'm actually working in an RGB document today and you're going to need two base colors and then one pale version of each color. So essentially a monochrome version of the original. We need an isometric grid for our design today and to make that, locate the rectangular grid tool below the line tool in the tools panel. And then just click the artboard one time. Now you can use the same measurements as I'm using on mine, but just make sure that the vertical and the horizontal numbers are the same values. Now on my last isometric tutorial, a viewer suggested creating an automated action to perform the next step. And I did try that, but the problem is that the transform values do not equate to a percent value, they follow a set number of heights instead of percentage. So we're going to need to first rotate this grid by 45 degrees. And then come into the transform window. and alter the height to 57.74% exactly. It would be great if Illustrator could automate this function, but like I said, Illustrator does not remember this action as a percent, rather a fixed height. Now resize your grid by holding down both the Alt Option key and Shift at the same time. Send the grid to the very back of all layers and then lock the grid and also the colors down by pressing Command or Control 2 on your keyboard. So we're now ready to start the isometric design of our house in today's Illustrator tutorial. Press I for the eyedropper tool, sample one of your darker colors and then press P for the pen tool and begin to draw out a shape just as I'm doing here. Simply follow your isometric grid and also make sure to keep the vertical lines at the same size. So on my design that's going to be 5 grid squares in height. I have also pressed the caps lock key so that my pen tool icon turns into an X and this just makes things more precise and easier when drawing with the pen tool. And you're going to need to toggle the smart guides on and off throughout today's tutorial depending on what you're doing and you can do that by pressing Command or Control U. Now as you can see, the smart guides have helped me align the vertical lines on the right hand side. Once you've drawn your shape, press V to select off of the path, and then press Shift and X to flick the stroke over to a filled shape. And that's the first design component for the isometric house in today's video. You can now resize your shape, but just make sure that you hold down shift when you resize it to scale it. Use the eyedropper tool to sample the lighter version of your color. And again, use the pen tool to draw the top of the ledge on your house like I'm doing here. Repeat the same process of pressing V to select off the path when you're finished and then select the lighter version of your second color. We're now going to draw the front edge of the isometric house, which again is just a matter of using the grid to follow along with in an isometric style. So when finished, again press Shift and X to change the stroke over to a fill. Our isometric house is starting to take place. I've gone ahead and added the block shape for the second floor of the house, but also I have to draw one square at the top. So draw the larger one first, and then the innermost smaller one after. 
When complete, select both of the squares and flick the strokes over to a fill by pressing Shift and X and then use the minus front option in the Pathfinder window. Now it's very very simple to make the bare essentials for the structure of the house using the isometric grid and the pen tool. And I'm going to fast forward to save time today in the video. But pause the video to see which colours I've used and which shapes make up the house. Also take note of the shadow here. This is the black shape of 25% opacity. And this is going to be crucial for the final effect in today's tutorial. Now I'm going to use this shadow technique on the lower floor of the house. Firstly, I'm going to change the fill of the shapes over to strokes with Shift and X so that I can see the grid below to use as a guide. So watch as I draw in the shape to represent the shadow on the bottom floor of the house using the black colour with 25% opacity. Now it's complete, it's then time to flip the stroke back over to a fill. And as you can see that looks pretty awesome. The next step in today's isometric tutorial is to draw in some steps. I've gone ahead and done that using the grid, but of course they're way too large obviously. So what I'm going to do here is to select the shapes that make up the steps and then go into the transform window. I can simply change the height and the width values to 50% exactly, which will scale down the stairs by 50% in total. Once scaled down, place the steps against the edge of the house and then adjust as you see fit. Today's tutorial is pretty straightforward actually if you follow the isometric grid. Finally for the stairs, select the shadow to sample its colour and opacity and then draw in a shape as I'm doing here to represent more shadow. For this, use the pen tool of course. It's now time to add some details to the isometric design, so follow along and let's add some detail to the house. I'm now working off of the artboard and I'm going to make an oval using the ellipse tool which you can locate by pressing L on your keyboard. Once you've made the ellipse, flick the fill over to a stroke and then hold down the Alt Option key and click and drag to duplicate it below. Bring the original circle to the front of all layers and then locate the Add Anchor Point tool in the toolbar menu. Carefully add an anchor point as I'm going to do here and then press A for the direct selection tool and move the anchor point up. This is basically just going to create the illusion of a 3D table for your design today. Flick the strokes back to fills and then make sure the lower oval is a darker grey compared to the upper one. Now it might be handy to select both of the ovals and then press Command or Control G to group everything together and then move the object onto your isometric design. Bring the shadow to the front of all layers to complete the effects at this stage. Now we're going to finish the table so locate the rectangle tool and draw a small rectangle like so. I'm working in Illustrator CC and if you're doing that as well you can use the live corners by selecting the direct selection tool but if you don't have CC and you're using something like CS then you're gonna have to use the round corner effects under the top drop down menu of effects. Now bring the tabletop and the shadow to the front of all layers and then add a gradient to the lower part. Now I wish I would have organised my layers in the layers window for this design and I suggest that you do that for your workflow because it is easier and more organised. 
So finally for the table, flick the floor over to a stroke with shift and X. And then draw an isometric square using the grid. Finally scale down the square. You can also add extra parts below to finish up the 3D illusion of your table. Now we've nearly finished our isometric house in today's video. And as you can see here on the front of the ground floor, I've added a green rectangle and also a rectangle of black 25% opacity. This gives an illusion of a glass panel on the front of a modern house. And at the top I've also made a deck chair using the isometric grid. And it's very straightforward to do if you follow the grid for your design. So finally let's make a neat window to the isometric house. I have a white stroked rectangle here following the isometric grid. And as before it helps to change the fills over to a stroke so you can see the grid below. Use the correct colours from your palette and then draw the lower ledge of the windowsill. Then also finish off the side ledge using the pen tool. For every shape that I draw, I select the white frame and then bring it to the front of all layers. Finally I'm going to add a dark dark green to show the inside of the window. Now of course we need some glass for a window and I'm going to represent the window as being half open. Using my light green colour in the colour palette, I can quickly draw in the glass panel and then lower the opacity to finish the effect. Remember to bring the white frame to the front of all layers and then flick the pink shape of the side of the house over to a fill. And there you have it guys, one isometric house made in Adobe Illustrator. Feel free to experiment with details and layouts, but just remember to utilize the isometric grid throughout the entire design. And I also suggest that you use the layers window and label your layers so you can hide them easily. I totally left that out of my workflow today and I do regret it. But yeah, let me know what you think of today's design and the video down in the comment section below. Subscribe to Tutorial Graphics if you haven't done already. And of course, like and share my content on social media if you want to help out the channel. And until next time guys, design your future today. Peace.